Now, atheists are sometimes put in the uncomfortable position of being asked to say grace before a meal. I know this happened to you at Oxford. Do you want to tell us yeah. about it? Okay. It's, it's on, um, if you want. It's okay. On it also on. happened to me one time after I'd had a debate at Wellington College, and the headmaster put me on the spot by asking me to say a secular grace. So <laughs> I didn't have much time, so I said, for what we are about to receive, thank the cook. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and incidentally, <laughs> That, that grace uh, makes sense to me, but I also like the grace by a cartoon character, Bart Simpson. He said, dear God, we paid for this food. Thanks for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of uh, the Simpsons, uh, there was a terrific experience for me, uh, when Richard spoke at the College of Charleston in 2013, the day after, we had a little reception for him at our place. And during the reception, Richard said, uh, do you mind if we watch some TV? Now, it seemed like an odd request, but then I put on the TV, and we turned to The Simpsons, and Richard was on. He was the star <laughs> of The Simpsons. <laughs> Okay, this is the, the, the story you want me to read here. As sub-warden of New College, the sub-warden is just the, it's, it's a rotating position that everybody has to do at some point. As sub-warden, I had to preside over dinner in hall and say grace before Benedictus Benedicat and after Benedicto Benedicata. I was one of the majority who pronounced this last word, Benedicata. Some of the older, classically trained fellows pronounced it Benedicator which fascinated me, although I never dared follow them. I doubt that they really thought that's how the Romans pronounced it, but their justification was surely thought out and deliberate, probably buried in some erstwhile dispute among the dominies. One of my predecessors as sub-warden, the ancient historian Geoffrey de St. Croix, used to refuse to say grace on conscientious grounds. He described himself as an atheist, politely militant. Equally conscientiously, however, he went out of his way to line somebody up to say it for him. Once when I was a dinner guest at King's, our sister college at Cambridge, whose chapel, incidentally, is one of the most beautiful buildings in England, the senior fellow presiding was the incomparable Sidney Brenner, one of the founding fathers of molecular genetics and winner of a well-deserved, they aren't always, Nobel Prize. Sidney gaveled everybody to stand, then solemnly intoned to his neighbor, Dr. So-and-so, will you please say grace? I, however, was of the school of thought of the great philosopher Sir Alfred Eyre, who, when sub-warden of New College, cheerfully said grace on the grounds that, I will not out of falsehoods, but I have no objection to making meaningless statements. <laughs> Geoffrey de St. Croix, by the way, who I just mentioned, uh, his lifelong quest was to, to decide whether Plato or St. Paul was the greatest shit of all time. 